Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This is Professor Abdussalam Yasin Taha from the College of Medicine, University of Suleimani, giving a talk on reference management with and without a software. This lecture is published on my YouTube channel and you can access the channel by visiting the link at the bottom of the slide. The topic of today is relevant and important to all academic writers. It's crucial for both professional writers or those just starting their research work and trying to write their first scientific piece of writing. So what I am trying to do today is to present my humble experience to you and forgive me for not being able to cover this big subject. Let us start with some important terms relevant to our topic, like reference and referee, author, editor, publisher, and librarian, types of references, reference list and bibliography, in-text citation in the form of Arabic numbers between round or square brackets or super script numbers, bibliographic elements, punctuation marks, Vancouver style and Harvard style as two common styles of referencing, plagiarism, the end note referencing software, and others. So reference is to use a source of information to ascertain something. While referee is a person chosen to examine and assess a scientific or other academic work for publication. An author is a writer of a book, article, or a report. An editor is a person who is in charge of determining the final content, con content of a text, particularly a newspaper or a magazine. A publisher is a person or company that prepares and issues books, journals, music, or other works for sale. Plagiarism is the practice of taking someone else's work or ideas and passing them off as one's own. And of course, all academics know the serious consequences of plagiarism. Why we need and we do referencing in our academic writing? We do that to acknowledge debts to other writers, to demonstrate the body of knowledge upon which our assignment is based to ena enable the reader or readers to locate our sources easily. And referencing is important to avoid plagiarism. What are the types of references or the sources of information? The reference might be uh, a journal article, might be a book, might be a dictionary or encyclopedia, might be a conference paper, might be a newspaper and magazine article, might be reports and other government publications, might be theses, web pages, other internet sources, and sometimes personal communication in the form of verbal, written, and email 
personal communication is also one type of reference. Additionally, we might have a pamphlet, a small book or booklet, package inserts, lecture notes, video or DVD, film or broadcast, tables, figures, images or appendices. However, in this lecture, we are going to study how to refer to journal articles and books. For other types of references, we need to read the original Vancouver document, and it is beyond the scope of this lecture to cover how to do citation or referencing of every type of reference. We'll concentrate on the journal articles and books mainly. Now, what differentiates academic writing from other writings? What differentiates academic writing from other writings is how well referenced it is. If you read a monograph or an article or a paper and you find no mention of a reference within its text or the so-called in-text citation or a list of references at the end of the article, definitely you will be in doubt about the scientific value of this paper. In contrast, a well-referenced paper gives you the impression that it has a valid scientific value. Look at the following example. So look at this paragraph. This is a, a paragraph written about the subject of foreign body aspiration. And as you can see, there are uh, many uh, references mentioned within the text of the uh, pa paragraph. And these are called in-text citation. And uh, we have uh, demonstrated here uh, different methods of in-text citation. Although uh, 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 usually when we write to a particular journal, we should uh, stick to the style of the journal and use only one form uh, of in-text citation. Here, uh, different types of in-text citation are mentioned for the sake of demonstration for the sake of teaching purpose only. So uh, this uh, paragraph uh, is well referenced. It is supported by many references. The reader uh, can go and check the references to be uh, uh, sure about the, uh, uh, accu the accuracy of the information. And uh, uh, this is the uh, proper way of uh, writing uh, a scientific uh, paper or an academic writing. So as one can see, there are different methods of in-text citation. Journals may differ in their preferred citation uh, style. And this is usually explained in the instructions to authors uh, posted in the website of each uh, journal. So foreign body aspiration is common. It is a life-threatening condition. Children under the age of five years are the usual sufferers. Family negligence is to be blamed, particularly in low socioeconomic class population. The event of aspiration is characterized by choking while eating, laughing, or crying. Death may occur due to suffocation with a big foreign body blocking the larynx. Citrider 
may result from inhalation of a foreign body that resides within the larynx or trachea. It is vital to educate parents to take care of their children to prevent this potentially fatal problem. John Ital, as well as other authors, believe that the incidence of foreign body aspiration can be greatly reduced by increasing the awareness of people. William, cited in five, states that unresolved cough in a child should be looked at uh, seriously, as seriously uh, as it may indicate a foreign body aspiration. Ali Ital quoted Ahmed in their article, who recommends bronchoscopy for children with unresolved cough to exclude foreign body aspiration. So the index citation uh, is in the form of Arabic numbers placed either between square brackets or between round brackets or as superscript numbers. And if we have uh, non-inclusive references, they are given numbers separated by commas without a space. But if we have inclusive ref references, for example, one to five, they are separated by a hyphen. And uh, the, uh, sometimes even the page uh, number from which the information uh, is taken is also mentioned. And when a group of authors uh, uh, are, uh, uh, are present, we mention the first author followed by Ital. And uh, when uh, uh, the information is taken from a secondary reference, we refer to that as uh, uh, what we have mentioned here. We say cited in five, five is the uh, primary reference, while William here is the secondary reference and so on. Now, what does citation mean? Citation is simply the process of mentioning your sources of information throughout your writing. This is called in-text citation. And to make a list of these sources or references at the end of your writing, it's also uh, part of the process of citation. Sometimes citation is used to describe the texts taken from another article. So it is either the process of mentioning the sources of information and the uh, list of references at the end of the uh, research uh, project, that is citation, or we use the term citation to refer to a paragraph or a statement uh, quoted from another article. Now, when you write for a journal, the submitted material is called a manuscript. Once it is published, the name is changed into a paper or an article. Each journal editors have a different method of in-text citation and a different method of writing the list of references at the end of the paper. So to start with, we have to understand the requirements of each journal before we make our submission. What happens if our manuscript was rejected by one journal. The answer is to search for another journal and read its instruction to authors. If the new journal has the same referencing style of the first journal, we are lucky. But if otherwise, we have to change both in-text citation and list of references according to the style of the new journal 
What happens if our manuscript was rejected again? Then we have to format our uh, work again. This is really a boring job to the authors and or their secretary. So what happened uh, if we look at the history of refer referencing? In 1978, a group of editors met in Vancouver, British Columbia in Canada. The group called itself the International Steering Committee, a name that was later changed to the International Committee of Medical Journal Editors, ICMJE. Because of its original meeting place, however, the ICMJE has often been called the Vancouver Group. And the main topic at the 1978 meeting was formats for references. The group of editors who met in Vancouver uh, tried to solve the problem of uh, the uh, variation between journals in their uh, styles in regard to the index citation and the list of references and so on. So what is the Vancouver referencing style? A uniform set of requirements for bibliographic references also known as the Uniform Requirements for Manuscripts Submitted to Biomedical Journals. It follows rules established by the International Committee of Medical Journal Editors. And the main feature of the Vancouver referencing style is uh, the numbered feature. It is a, a numerical style. It is a numerical style. So Vancouver style is the commonly used style in medical and scientific journals. In the Vancouver style, the reference list appears at the end of the essay or report with the entries listed numerically and in the same order that they have been cited in the text. Uh, if you have cited sources from the internet, these should also be mentioned in the reference list. Reference list identifies references cited in sufficient detail so that others may locate and consult them. Punctuation marks and spaces in the reference list and citations are also very important. Therefore, follow the punctuation and spacing exactly as in the following examples. So in the Vancouver style, index citations are identified by Arabic numbers in round brackets. When multiple references are cited at a given place in the text, use a hyphen to join the first and last numbers that are inclusive and use commas without spaces to separate non-inclusive numbers in a multiple citation. Example, two comma, three comma, four comma, five comma, seven comma, 10 is abbreviated to Two hyphen five comma seven comma ten. Well, uh, sometimes uh, uh, the source of information we are uh, using in our writing is an editorial. So, what is an editorial? This is an example of an editorial coffee drinking and cancer of the pancreas between two brackets editorial published in the bmj 1981 volume 283 
page 628. So the editorial is a piece of writing displayed in a prominent uh, position that expresses a strong view on a matter of importance to uh, publications readers. They are also called leading articles or leaders. So for editorial, no author is given as it represents the opinion of the journal as a whole rather than a person. Nevertheless, sometimes there is a signed editorial written by a personal author. So the essential elements for referencing journals are the author name, number one, followed by title of the article, then the journal title, then the date of publication, then the volume number, then the issue number, and lastly, the page numbers. And the name of the journal should be in standard PubMed abbreviations. Full journal name should not be used. So for example, PMJ, uh, BMJ stands for British Medical Journal. Now let's look at this slide, which demonstrates uh, the elements of citation uh, uh, used in uh, writing a, a, a journal article. So this is uh, the name of a journal article. We start by the name of the authors, Sink uh, JK, comma, Bawa M, comma, Kanogia RP, comma, Ray B, comma, Minon P, comma, Rao KL, full stop. So here, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Some uh, journals uh, requires that uh, up to six authors uh, should be mentioned. Uh, if six, if more than six authors are present, uh, we should uh, mention the abbreviation ETAL after the sixth author. And each author name uh, starts with the uh, family name, followed by two initials. So authors are mentioned in correct sequence and names checked from the PubMed. After the full stop, we mention the correct title of the article to come after the author name or names, idiopathic, simultaneous, interception in a new name, followed by a full stop. Then we mention the correct journal abbreviation as given in PubMed, pediatric Serge Ent. Pediatric Surgery International. Then we mention the year of the article given after the uh, journal abbreviation uh, 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 with separated by a space 2009. Then we put a semicolon and we put the volume number. So the year of publication is followed by the volume number. After that, we put a colon, and then we mention the page numbers comes last. And this should not be written as 445 uh, hyphen 447. Uh, we mention only the, uh, uh, the last number. So uh, that is the 445 hyphen seven means 445 hyphen 447. So that is uh, a demonstration of a journal article uh, citation in the reference list. What about the punctuation marks? If we uh, go through the same uh, example and uh, 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 check the uh, pattern of the punctuation marks, after each author name, we have a comma. 
So the comma followed by a space after each author name and do not write and before the last author. Then a full stop after the last author followed by space and then the article title. Full stop after the article title followed by a space. And here a single space between the journal abbreviation and the year of publication and uh, place no other punctuation marks in between. Semicolon after the year of publication without a space and then a colon after the volume number without any space and then hyphen to separate the page numbers and full stop at the end of the reference. Well, what about an electronic article? Nowadays, many uh, journal articles are uh, published on the net, but they are not available in a print, uh, print, uh, printed form or a hard, as a hard copy. That's called an electronic article. Well, the uh, elements of citation are the same. We have the author uh, names, then the title of the article, then the uh, uh, abbreviation of the uh, journal, then the year of publication, the volume number, the issue number, and the page numbers. And we need to put or to add what we call the DOI. DOI refers to uh, digital object identifier. This is uh, a unique uh, code for the article. So if we put uh, this DOI in the uh, search uh, space or in the net, immediately we should be able to uh, retrieve the paper. Uh, additionally, if we have an electronic article, uh, uh, we need sometimes uh, to mention after the name of the journal, between two brackets, the word internet. And we mention after the year of publication, between two brackets, the statement cited 2010, April 22. And we mention the date of citation. And uh, after the page number, we also mention available from, and we mention the link, or what you call the URL. The URL stands for Uniform Resource Locator. Again, the URL uh, is unique for the published material. If we use the URL, we should be able to reach the, uh, uh, the journal article, the electronic article. Now, what about uh, books? Uh, uh, if we have a book uh, used as uh, a reference in our uh, article, we have different types of books actually, but we don't want to confuse uh, you. Uh, we have chosen only one, uh, one example. So here, uh, first of all, we, uh, we have, if we have a chapter in a book, a chapter, uh, in edited book. We start by mentioning the name of the authors of the chapter. Uh, here we have three authors. Each author name starts with the uh, family, family name and then initial followed by comma. And we don't mention the word and uh, before the last author. Then we put a full stop. Then we write the title of the author, long-term results of biliary atresia. We put a full stop, then we put the word in and uh, a colon, and then we write the name of the editor, the chief editor, the chief editor of the book, Gupta DK, comma, and we write uh, editor, then full stop. Then we mention the name of the book, textbook of neonatal surgery, then comma, and we mention the uh, number of the edition. Some books 
uh, have different additions. So uh, we mentioned the uh, uh, name of the addition. Uh, some uh, do not uh, require to mention the first addition if there's only a single addition. Uh, they need to mention the additions from the second addition and above. After that, we mentioned the place of publication. For example, here, a new Delhi. And then we put a comma. After the state of publication, we mentioned the name of the publisher. Modern publishers here is the name of the publisher, followed by semicolon, and then the year of publication, then the page, the year and page number. Okay, so it's an example of how to cite a chapter in an edited book. Well, what about the abbreviation et al? Uh, uh, this abbreviation uh, mentioned after the primary author name means the author and his group. The author and his group. It can be seen in the text, in the in-text citation, or in the list of references. The use of et al differs from uh, one journal to another. Within the text, if we have three or more authors, the first author is mentioned followed by et al. In the list of references, some journals require to mention et al after the third author, while others require to use et al after the sixth author. In contrast, some journals ask to mention all author, authors' names without using et al. So, uh, to make it simple, uh, within the text, if we have more than, uh, if we have uh, one author, we mention it. If we have two authors, we mention both. For example, uh, John and uh, Smith. If we have three authors or more, we mention the first author followed by the word ital. In the list of references, we have to stick to the uh, instructions of the journal. Some journals, uh, they need to mention ital after the third author. Some journals require to mention ital after the sixth author, while some journals require to mention all author names without ital. Now, this is an example of the list of references according to the Vancouver style. The list of references is mentioned at the end of the paper. And as you can see, uh, uh, each journal uh, is written according to the uh, sequence of that we have discussed uh, before. Uh, uh, and uh, if we have uh, a, a, the number of authors, uh, multiple authors, then either we mention them all or we mention the first three or the first six authors followed by ital according to the uh, requirements of the journal. And the uh, journal, the references are listed in the, uh, in, in the list according to their uh, uh, citation in the text. So what is mentioned uh, first in the text will be given number one. What is mentioned second will be given will be given number two and so on. Now, uh, Vancouver uh, uh, referencing style uh, is described as a librarian system or uh, a librarians uh, friendly system. Now, why? Who is the librarian? The librarian is a person typically with a degree in library science, who administers or assists in a library. So for a librarian, each written work is just a number. Whether uh, uh, this work uh, is done by the most brilliant scientist or the most ordinary uh, writer. The librarian works by giving each work a number or a tag. So يعني, the Vancouver system or style uh, being numerical uh, is very close 
to the work of librarian who uh, 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 considers the, uh, the journals and the books like numbers. Well, now we have a different type of referencing style called the Harvard style or the author date uh, style. Now what is Harvard style? Harvard style is a generic term uh, used for any referencing style which uses in-text references such as Smith 1999. And reference lists at the end of the document organized by the author name and year of publication. So here, yeah, in, in, according to the Harvard style, we don't mention numbers. We mention, yeah, for each reference, between two round brackets, the name of the primary author, followed by the year of publication. And at the end of the paper, we also mention a list of references, but the references are arranged alphabetically. They are uh, uh, arranged according to the uh, alphabet of the first author. So for example, this is uh, an example of uh, a journal uh, article mentioned uh, in the list of references in Harvard style, the author name followed by the year, then the title of the uh, paper and the abbreviation of the journal, the volume number, the issue number and the page numbers. So if we uh, contrast or compare the two systems, the or the two styles, Vancouver versus Harvard, both systems have advantages. Vancouver is good for categorizing and indexing. Harvard is good for research and reading. Vancouver can incorporate good points of Harvard and become the prime or the main referencing system. So look at this uh, list of references in Harvard style. Here we have a number of uh, journal articles, and as you can see, they are arranged alphabetically. This is A, Abilaz, that's B, Banning, that is C, Kram, that is the dash and so on. So the uh, journal articles are arranged uh, uh, according to, the, to their alphabets. And uh, within the text or in the in-text, uh, each uh, reference is represented by the name of the first author followed by the year of publication. Now what about the term bibliography? Is it the same as the list of references? Well, the answer is no. The answer is not. It is different from the list of references. The bibliography is a separate list from the reference list and should be arranged alphabetically by author or title. The bibliography uh, list sources uh, not cited in the text, but which are relevant to the subject and were used for background uh, reading. Or in other words, a list of material you have used for information or inspiration, but have interfered to directly in the text. So to make it more clear, suppose we have 10 sources of information we have read and used in writing our article, Five of them, we have used them actually in writing our uh, paper. These five references should be mentioned in the list of references. But the remaining five, we have read them and we have taken information from them uh, to widen our scope uh, or our understanding of subject, but we didn't use them directly in writing our uh, paper or our article. These should be mentioned as a, a bibliography list. Now we come to uh, an important uh, part of our subject. So far, we, uh, we discussed how to uh, 
uh, write references uh, uh, in the traditional way, what we call the manual approach. Okay, now uh, uh, recently, and over the last probably 25 years, uh, software programs have been introduced uh, to help the academics or the writers to facilitate the uh, process of referencing. Because as you have seen, the process of writing a reference is time consuming and uh, uh, tedious and liable for mistakes. And uh, uh, every journal has a special style. So if we move from one journal to another, then you have to spend uh, time and efforts to arrange our uh, references according to the style of the new journal. Therefore, uh, software programs have been uh, introduced to solve this problem, and that's called uh, reference manager software. Uh, so as examples, we have EndNote and Mendili. EndNote and Mendili are software programs that assist in creating reference lists. They can be downloaded from the internet and also there are additional uh, uh, softwares, not only EndNote and Mendili. Uh, they can be used to import references from online databases using PubMed as an example. They can be used to create a custom group and add a reference to it. They can be used to find and download PDFs for references. They can be used to insert a reference in a Word document. They can be used to format a bibliography using the Vancouver style as an example. And they can be used to add page numbers to a citation and even more. So the functionality of these uh, softwares is very beautiful. So what do you prefer? Referencing with or without software? It is like doing a homework in math, mathematics. You can use your brain and do the homework without a calculator, or you may prefer using the calculator and give your brain a rest. So my advice is to understand referencing lists uh, first uh, without a software, and then you may apply uh, a software to facilitate the job. So reference management with a software, this is really attractive and easy. I prefer Mendeley software, although three other softwares do exist. First of all, download Mendeley to your desktop, then select the references that you need in writing your articles as PDFs and save them in your computer. Then open the Mendeley, create a group and add the references to it. Then start writing your article in word processor and cite while you write. When you finish writing your article, create a list of references at the end of the article. And anytime you wish, you can change the referencing style by just a click. Now let us see this uh, uh, video, 10 minutes video, uh, which demonstrates uh, the referencing with Mendeley uh, software. So first of all, what we're going to do? We create a folder. Suppose we want to write a subject about hydatid disease in Iraq. We open a folder and we uh, put we, uh, a number of references as PDFs in that folder. Then we open uh, the Mendeley 
uh, program. Okay. Here we come to this uh, create a folder. We create a new folder and we give it a name. For example, our subject is hydatid disease in Iraq. Then we come, uh, we add the references uh, from the folder that's present on the uh, desktop. We open the folder on the desktop named Hadith in Iraq, and we add all these uh, references, which are about six uh, references, to the new group in the Mendili, Hadith in Iraq, and they will be available to us for uh, use uh, for citation. Okay, then we open the word processor and we start writing, for example, a paragraph uh, about highlighted disease in Iraq. We give it a, a, a title. That is the title of our uh, article. We, we write about uh, our subject. We take information from uh, uh, our, our references. Highlighted disease is very common. in Iraq. Well, this information uh, is, was uh, taken from one uh, reference. So we open Mendili, and then we write in, we click insert citation. We click go to Mendili, then we go to the uh, group and we click and uh, on the reference that uh, we have chosen here, for example, Sarsem 1971. And we continue writing. There are three radiological signs considered diagnostic of ruptured pulmonary hydatid Cyst. Okay. So now we uh, continue. This statement is taken from another reference. So what we are going to do? Again, insert citation. Go to Mendili. We choose the uh, uh, reference and we click cite, and that's it. Taha, two thousand and five. And we continue writing our uh, article. High dated disease is very endemic in our country. Now, this statement is taken from another reference. So, sorry.
is very endemic in Iraq or in our country. Insert citation, go to Mendeley, we choose the uh, reference and click cite. And that is Talib 1968. And we continue. The main diagnostic tool is plain chest radiography. Okay, now the statement, click insert citation, go to Mendeley, choose the reference, and click cite. And that's it, Al Hassani and Taha 2015. We continue writing. One of the main considerations. after pulmonary hydatid disease surgery is prolonged air leak okay and see a citation. Go to Mendeley, choose the reference, click cite, and that's at Taha 2013. I'll continue. Obliteration of the residual sister space is recommended. in uncomplicated cases dot okay and see a citation go to Mendeley choose the reference and click cite and that's it Shahada et al 2008 now we'll justify the text okay then now we we can we want to uh, uh to, to to create a list of references what you're going to do we go to insert we go to the bibliography and we choose the word reference okay this will be the title of the of the list very easy references and then we click here we go to insert bibliography okay so now uh, we have a list of references have been pub have been listed uh, at the at the end of our paper we want to change the uh, uh, style into vancouver we have chosen there if we want to change the style into another style again we can we can come here and choose another style for example here we click to uh, uh, harvard okay we can choose another style we have more than 5000 uh, referencing styles that is uh, nature okay so we can uh, change the style of referencing whether in text 
or uh, the list of references, references by a simple click. Now we'll save our work and that's it. So what are the take home messages from our lecture? Good academic work should be well referenced. Overall, recent articles from high quality specialist journals are preferred as references. Avoid citing articles from predatory journals. The academic writer should master referencing techniques and be capable of proper in-text citation and creating lists of references. Referencing software programs are available. They are very useful for the academic writer to facilitate citing while writing, as well as importing references from websites, inserting citation, creating and formatting references, uh, reference lists, etc. The time consuming and tedious process of referencing that is used to be done manually and liable for making mistakes can be replaced by this precise quick computer job, just like many things in our digital world. Nevertheless, EndNote and Mendeley huh, should not be our start in studying references. And uh, I would like to conclude my lecture by this uh, quote, quotation from Sir Ishaq Newton. He said, if I, if, I, if I have seen further, it is by standing on the shoulders of the giants. So I would like to mention my first teachers in surgery, Mr. Adnan Yasin Al Arab, born in 1946. He had the degree of FRCS and he was a senior consultant general surgeon. And Mr. Amin Abbas Amin, born in 1947, had an FRCS in general surgery, FRCS general surgery. He's a senior consultant general surgeon. I am in debt to uh, Mr. Adnan and Mr. Amin, as well as to all my teachers who taught me uh, in my medical career, and uh, that is uh, Professor Abdul Salam Yassin Taha from the College of Medicine, University of Suleimani, signing off, and thank you for watching and listening to the lecture.